Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Rex and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. Today, Pastor Jeff will be sharing from the Word of God titled, Once Save, Always Save. But first, please join us in some praise and worship to glorify the Lord. Hallelujah, I want to sing all about it, hallelujah. I want to shout all about it, hallelujah. I can't live without it, praise God, praise God. Now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. And now there is no condemnation, praise God. Hallelujah, I want to sing all about it, hallelujah. I want to shout all about it, hallelujah. I can't live without it, praise God, praise God. Now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. One more time, hallelujah. I want to sing all about it, hallelujah. I want to shout all about it, hallelujah. I can't live without it, praise God, praise God. Now I'm living with a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. Thank you. 
Good evening. Welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. I'm Pastor Jeff. Got a good devotional for you tonight. A little bit of a Bible study type devotional with the title being Once Saved, Always Saved. You know, there's two sides to every story and this one has one also. One side represents that when you were saved um, and, and truly saved, as much as you can tell in your heart, you were sincere and truly believed in Jesus that you were indeed saved. And no matter what you did with your life from that point forward, you could never lose or give up your salvation. That's the one side of the story. Once saved, always saved. And these people say, no. We've got the group that says, no, once you're saved, you're not always saved. Now, the other side of the story, it is believed that once you're saved and willingly and sincerely believe, believe in the Lord Jesus and that in, if in your life you do those things that are contrary to what God says, you indeed may lose your salvation and may be in danger of God's judgment. So that would be yes, the side that says yes, you can lose your salvation. And I'm going to share scriptures with you on both sides so that maybe it might spark you to do a little bit of extra homework and decide for yourself which way you believe. For those who say, you're ready to get started, for those who say, no, once you are saved, you are not always saved. We'll start with a scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 26 and 27. If we deliberately keep on sinning, after we've received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. My, that's a powerful one right there. No more sacrifice for sins is left. That's a pretty strong argument. What about another one? For those who say no, once you are saved, you're not always saved. Matthew chapter 24, verses 10 through 13. At that time, many will turn away from the faith. I think they're talking about in the latter days. And will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Standing firm to the end is the key phrase in there, indicating we have some concern here. I've seen a lot of times in the Bible that the, the writers are indicating if and when, giving it a conditional feel. Let's keep going. The book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. I warn everyone who hears the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues that are described in this scroll. If anyone takes words away from the scroll of this prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and the holy city, which will be the heaven that we keep referring to and talking about, which are described in this scroll or in this book that we read. So, how could that be? you got to ask yourself, gee whiz, if we cannot lose our salvation, how in the world is it that by doing this or this or this thing, in this case, removing from the words of the 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 word of, removing the words from the book of god the word of the lord that he would then remove our name from the tree of life our, uh, the holy city which are described in the book that's a strong one also i picked out like four four scriptures that i thought were good and and good so i'm going i'm going to represent this very fairly both sides so we're talking about those who say, once you are saved, 
you are not always saved. Okay? No, once you're saved, you're not always saved. The last scripture for this, this side of the fence. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20-21. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and to turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. That's a hard, boy, that's like the showstopper right there. My goodness sakes. So we've completed the arguments for those who say, no, once you are saved, you're not always saved. That's pretty darn convincing. But you know what? There's always the rest of the story. How many of you have children out there, uh, a pair of them, and they get in a fight, and they come and they run and they tell you the, the story, just one of them, and then... You have to always wait. If you're a wise parent, you always wait and hear the other side of the story to see what really happened. Are you ready for side number two? For those who say, yes, once you are saved, you cannot ever lose it no matter uh, what. You can't lose your salvation no matter what you do, what you say, anything. You're God's and that's it. Here's some scriptures for that. To support that, we're supporting this side so that you can, you can judge yourself. In the book of John, chapter 10, verses 27 through 29, Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. Wow. <laughs> Did you realize there, there's going to be good arguments on both sides? It's, it's almost like you need attorneys to, <laughs> to, to figure this out. Well, you know, uh, one says this, one says this. But that's no one will snatch the saved persons out of his Father's hands. What a wonderful scripture you'll find maybe some concern in the scriptures that I'm sharing tonight, maybe some comfort, concern and comfort. But we'll sort it out at the end. Let's turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 6. It says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the Lord Jesus Christ, the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who started that salvation in you, being confident that he will continue it right on to the end. That sounds like there's no turning back. The Lord is faithful, and he will continue until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's comfort right there. That's, I'm feeling good about that. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, it says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our, our Lord. I believe that with all my heart. There's nothing, nothing that can separate us from the fact of how much God, you know, God loved us so much. What? He gave His only Son to die for us. That's powerful. Powerful scriptures we're talking about for those who say, yes, once you are saved, you cannot not ever lose your salvation no matter what. And that is the fact of the matter that God loves us that much. Nothing can ever separate us from His love. The last scripture for those who say, yes, yes, once you're saved, you cannot ever lose it. Last scripture is in the book of John, chapter 5, verse 24. It says, Verily, truly, 
very, oh, very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. It seems like salvation is kind of wrapped up in that sentence, doesn't it? It seems that way. We know we have to read in the Bible. There may be other things that may oppose that or may add to it a little bit. Gives more clarity, I would like to say. But what a wonderful scripture. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but is crossed over from death to life. So there's both sides. There's the, no, I think you can lose your salvation. And then there's the, yes, you can never lose your salvation. Those are certainly good scriptures to think about. But here's my final thoughts on the matter. And hopefully I will encourage you to do a little, because there's a lot of more scriptures. I, I could have picked out four to five more scriptures on each side. But even though, as the scripture says, no one, no thing can snatch you away from God or even separate you from the love of God, there's this whole free will thing that God has given us. Granted, no one can snatch us away. No one can take us away. But sometimes we ourselves are our own worst enemies. We could certainly, in my opinion, of our own accord, choose to walk away from God, as many have, to be drawn away to the dark side of life, to choose things that seem more fun, with not so many rules and no guilt for doing bad things. We certainly can choose to give up on God and thereby forfeit our salvation. We've got that free will things. It doesn't nullify the scriptures that I've shared with you. Every single bit of those scriptures are 100% true, but they're all missing the free will factor, the fact that God has given us the ability to choose. But, as the scripture also says, if we persevere, if we stand firm to the end, a couple of if statements, we shall be saved. Hallelujah! We shall be saved if we persevere. So all hope is not lost. I would just caution you, be careful how you live your lives. Don't give up on God. Keep God in the forefront of your thoughts every day. Do as much for God as you can because He cares for you. He died for you, that we may live for Him. So I would encourage you to live for the Lord. What are your thoughts? Which, what side of the fence are you on? Leave us a note in the comments on which side. You can even share a scripture if you want. Well, this one here might say this. Like I said, I've only put just a few of, few of them down. So we'd love to hear from you. Pray with me tonight, would you please? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God. Thank you for this opposing, an opposing viewpoint message that we have here tonight. It's designed to make us think, Lord God, make us think about how we live our lives. Do we live our lives like there's no second chance? Do, do we carry on like we don't really care because God's already got me? I said the, the prayer of salvation when I was five years old. And I've been good for the, I'll be good for the rest of my life. We have to be careful with that, Lord. Touch our hearts. Touch our hearts and open our hearts and our minds to the truth that you would reveal to us in the scriptures and help us to find your truth that we would glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And thank you, Pastor Jeff, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our midweek devotional. If you have been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click on the bell to be notified of our future videos. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your entire family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dorth Highway at Sunday morning at 1030. We pray that the Lord may bless you so that you then may become a blessing to others.